Hello and welcome to another episode of Only Scans, where clinical correlation is most definitely advised. If you're new here, please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell on, and uh, you'll be able to access uh, more new content as it's released on the channel. So today we've got another very interesting episode. This is not only aligned for those of you who just want to improve your radiology knowledge, but also for those of you preparing for the radiology application interviews in the UK. Um, and basically what we're going to talk about today is how to prioritize your priorities, the dark art of imaging prioritization. Um, we've heard that this may be coming up in the radiology interviews. It has come up in the past before. It's a common thing you will be expected to do when it comes to your duties as a doctor on the wards. You will have to decide what imaging is needed. Of course, you'll speak with the radiologist, but you do have to put in the scan request. So it's important to know what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and how to make that decision. So when it comes to imaging prioritization, there are two main elements. The first is clinical urgency. The second is radiological relevancy. And I explain what each of these means in turn going forward. But as Thanos said, it's all about being perfectly balanced, as all things should be. So remember, it's a balance between clinical urgency and radiological relevancy. So what do I mean by clinical urgency? Well, fundamentally, does it need to be done now? A lot of the time, scan requests don't necessarily need to be done now. It may be something on your to-do list when it comes to the jobs you've acquired from the ward round or from clinic, but does it need to be done right here, right now? That's something that you have to decide as the clinician requesting the scan and as the radiologist who has to vet the scans and prioritize the scans. It's all about balancing the urgency from a clinical perspective versus the radiological relevancy. So let's put it into context. Here we have our very tired, disgruntled clinician on the wards. She's just found a bit of time to do her jobs in the side room. So she's on the phone to the clinical radiologist who is uh, yeah, clearly at work, as you can tell from the image. He's not on his holiday or remotely uh, away from the desk in his nice uh, fancy sports car. No, 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 no. He's clearly at work. So, hi, is this the radiologist on call? The radiologist like, yeah, of course it is. Uh, just give me a second. I'm going to take this selfie real quick. Um, okay, uh, can I discuss a CT staging scan for this patient, please? Eh? A CT staging scan on Saturday at 7 p.m. Is it really indicated? Is it really clinically urgent? Yeah, yeah, of course it's urgent, like all scans are, basically. Well, why? How is it going to change management over a weekend when it comes to a staging CT? Well, the clinician's like, actually, wait a minute on uh, reflection. Yeah, it's not going to change management over the weekend. Whilst we think it's urgent in terms of um, getting the patient in the appropriate workflow when it comes to MDT discussion, um, but it's not necessary to be done on a Saturday at 7 p.m. So the radiologist being like, yeah, don't worry. It's something that we do need to do, but we don't need to do it right now. And of course, they have to go not to a Michelin star restaurant. That's that's clearly not true. Of course, the radiologists start work. Um, no, no, no. They're going back to the department. Clearly, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So here's just a just. And I know it's a very uh, dramatic example, but it is something you should be taking into balance. What is the clinical urgency of the scan? And of course, the poor clinician is now thinking wait a minute, should I apply to radiology as well? Of course you should, definitely. It's the best career decision you'll ever make. So moving on to radiological relevancy, what that basically means when it comes to radiological relevancy is that is this the best imaging modality to answer the question? And surprise, shock Pikachu face, sometimes you don't need imaging at all. I know that sounds uh, crazy, like, Without imaging, we can make a diagnosis. Yes, you can. It's called clinical examination and taking a detailed history. I know it sounds like witchcraft, but honestly, there are certain diagnoses which don't need imaging 
whatsoever. It's a clinical diagnosis and one you should be making based upon the history and clinical examination and possible correlation with any biochemical markers or lab tests that you've done. So let's give an example. Once again, we've got our very tired, very depressed clinician. Look how much paperwork they've got in their office. They've just found a short time to catch up on all their jobs and they're on the phone to the on-call radiologist who once again is clearly at work. Um, of course, they're not at the beach. They're at work doing their on-call. And so once again, hi, is this the radiologist on call? Yes, it is. Um, the signal isn't that great in the office, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, and now they're requesting a chest x-ray stat to rule out a tension pneumothorax. And what does the radiologist say? No, no way, Jose. And they're like, what? It's a medical emergency. Yes, tension pneumothorax is a medical emergency. But it's also a clinical diagnosis, not a radiological one. You shouldn't be seeing chest x-rays that have tension uh, pneumothorax on it. It's something that should have been diagnosed clinically. And clinician, being the honest individual that they are, like, yep, yeah, you got me there. Very nice, cordial discussion between the clinician and the radiologist. And now the radiologist is like, once again, I've saved someone's life. And now they're going to go back to vetting their scans. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Not getting a tan on the beach. It's about vetting the scans and doing the on-call. And once again, our clinician is like, I should have done radiology. It's never too late. Always consider it. It's a great career choice. So just to recap, it's a balance between clinical urgency and radiological relevancy. Don't forget that. And it's about putting the two into perspective to then decide, yes, this is a clinically urgent scan. And yes, it's radiologically relevant. So let's do it. The another thing that you should be aware of is that when it comes to prioritizing scans, it's situation specific. So what do I mean by that? Well, it's there is a fundamental difference between in hours and out of hours in terms of what is available to you as the clinician requesting the scan and as the radiologist who wants to potentially vet and prioritize a scan. So when you're doing uh, an in-hours request, there's more staff, there's definitely increased access to MRI, and of course, during in-hours, you're doing both emergency and elective work. So cold reporting, this, these elective scans like CT staging scans, uh, elective MR brains, but also you're doing emergency work like the acute CT reporting, the acute MRI reporting. That happens both in hours and out of hours. But when it comes to out of hours work, for example, evenings, nights, weekend shifts, bank holidays, there's less staff. Often it's known as the skeleton staff, where it's just a minimum uh, staffing level to ensure that service can be provided. Often emergency services, okay? And one of the big things in radiology is that you get a decreased access to MRI. The slots for MRI are often reserved for emergency cases. We're talking about things typically like corda equina syndrome that need to be investigated with an urgent MRI. And even then, there's only a set number of slots for these out-of-hours MRI. So whenever you're looking at prioritizing scans, especially for those of you who are going to an interview, always think about what situation am I in? Look at the circumstances of the scenario. Am I in hours? Is it a Monday 10 a.m. normal working day? Or is it a Monday at 1 a.m. where I'm doing it on a night shift? Because then you need to be able to discuss and outline why you're requesting the scan you are because the resources available to you will be different when it's in hours versus out of hours. Another thing you should all be aware of, whether you're requesting a scan and whether you're prioritizing a scan, and mainly for those requesting a scan, is guidelines, guidelines, guidelines. They are there to guide you. They are there to help you decide what scan is relevant and for the radiologists to help you decide what scans to prioritize and make sure you vet appropriately, basically accept them. So know them, all right? They are your friend. They are there to help you and they are there to guide you. So examples of certain guidelines are in front of your screen. We've got the uh, the very common head injury guidelines for both adult and pediatrics. 
when should a uh, patient get a CT head when it comes to head injury, spinal injury, for example, when should a child or an adult get a CT spine, cervical spine. Then we've got things such as the diagnosis of thoracic aortic dissection. This is a relatively new guideline at the time of uh, making this video for you guys. So these guidelines all exist and you can see them all on your screen. The guidelines regarding major adult trauma, guidelines regarding pulmonary embolism, the thing all radiologists hate because the D-dimer is one of the most useless uh, tests ever done and it's a pain in our backside, but it's good to know about how to stratify the risk of PE using things like well score and then having that discussion with the radiologist about the clinical urgency and the radiological relevancy of a CTPA. Then things like uh, CTKUB for acute renal colic, what are the guidelines? Often trusts have their own independent uh, guidelines that have been tailored for their own trusts and the needs of their trust. So it's good to know what happens in your own hospital. And of course, the getting it right first time guidelines that talks about the national suspected quarter equina syndrome pathway and in what time frame you need to get an urgent MRI done to rule out or rule in quarter equina. So get to know them. And these are very useful in bringing up during your discussion with the radiologist saying you're following the nice guidelines. Then of course the discussion becomes very streamlined and very easy for both parties. Remember the radiologist is there to help you. We're not there to fight despite what people think. We're there to make sure the patient gets the best treatment possible. And if we can help by getting a scan sorted out and reported accordingly, then we will do it, of course. We're not there to shirk away from work, right? We're there to help you and we're your allies. So if you can work with us, we will work with you. And for those of you going to interview, bringing these up during your discussion as part of your answer is a great way to show your understanding of radiology as a specialty. If you're unsure as to where you can find out more information, one of the best resources I've come across is the iRefer resource set up by the Royal College of Radiologists and it helps you determine the best, safest and most appropriate imaging investigations. So pl please do check out the iRefer website and the link is on your screen. Now, one critical thing you should be aware of when requesting a scan and when prioritizing a scan. Beware the woman of childbearing age. If I could put like an ambulance or a police or a fire siren here, I would just to make sure this point gets emphasized as much as I possibly could. The reason why is because of the risk of radiation exposure to a pregnant woman. This is a never event, which is kind of self-explanatory, i.e. it should never happen. And if it does happen, it's a huge issue. It leads to a lot of uh, paperwork. There's a lot of um, concern about the exposure you've given to the pregnant woman. That's why it's known as a never event. And there's a lot of safeguarding in place, not only from the clinical side, the radiological side, including radiographers, uh, making sure that pregnancy related questions have been asked. But when it comes to you making that thought process about do I get this scan done? Wait a minute. How old is this woman again? Have I checked her pregnancy status, especially when you're requesting radiation exposure like CT, plain thumbs. And for those of you preparing for your interview, if you see a scenario that talks about a young woman of childbearing age and they're requesting a scan, typically a CTPA, make sure you bring up that thought that I would need to know if the clinicians have asked if this woman could be pregnant because this will influence what imaging I do and the risks of that imaging to the woman and also the fetus. And the reason why it's such an important issue is that there is a balance between the risk to the mother, for example, from a pulmonary embolism, when we're discussing getting a CTPA for a woman who of childbearing age that could be pregnant. So there's a risk to the mother from the PE and there's a risk to the fetus from ionizing radiation. And it's once again a balance between these two elements. For example, the risk to the mother from the pathology. Classic scenario is always like pulmonary embolism, but it could be anything um, where the woman is pregnant. And then the risk to the fetus from the ionizing radiation that you're going to give them 
to try and diagnose the pathology that could then kill the mother. So like I said, it's a balance between the two. If you want to read more around this subject, there's a great article in the BMJ called Making Decisions About Radiological Imaging in Pregnancy. It's a fantastic article. Please do check it out. It talks about the uh, rationale behind these risks, the uh, evidence behind uh, these risks, and gives you example scenarios of what factors you should consider. So definitely check it out. It's a fantastic article. It's been written very well, and it's definitely helped change my practice as a radiologist. And finally, if in doubt, please do speak to your friendly neighborhood radiologist. Like I said, we are there to guide you and we are there to help you. At the end of the day, if the scan is clinically urgent and radiologically relevant, then we will do it. And the reason we will is because we know it will help guide you when it comes to the clinical management of the patient to ensure the patient gets the best care. And for those of you who are potentially going to interview and you're like, okay, what if I don't know how to prioritize this scan? Then once again, speak to your colleagues. If there's other uh, radiology registrars around you, you could speak to them. If there's a consultant, you could ask them. But don't um, avoid speaking to colleagues or getting in touch with the radiology department if you're in doubt. Like I said, we're there to help you. We're there to make sure the patient gets the best care. And at the end of the day, if it's radiologically relevant and clinically urgent, then the scan will get done. So if you liked the uh, episode, please do check out our radiology crash course where we cover the fundamentals of imaging modalities when it comes to those common imaging modalities that you will be expected to encounter potentially in your medical school finals, maybe in your OSCE examinations, and also as a foundation doctor covering things like A&E, general medical, general surgical wards. So yeah, do check us out. And of course, please drop any comments that you have down below and make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care.